<laughs> the broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon um, for our TE product talk regarding Power VersaLock connectors. Um, my name is Cerise Minnick. I am from TE Product Marketing. And before I pass over the floor to Doug for our formal welcome, I wanted to very quickly just go over a few logistical issues for the webinar today. Uh, the audience will be muted um, during the presentations. That is just to prevent any type of background noise and making make sure that everyone can hear our presenters clearly throughout the presentation. However, we do in invite everyone to please engage. There is a question section on the webinar, go to webinar um, menu that has popped up. It's down towards the bottom. At any point during any of the presentations, uh, please feel free to uh, type any of the questions that you might have into that section. And then at the end of the presentation, we do have some time allotted for a Q&A section. And we will start to read off those questions. If we don't get to any of the questions during that time, we will go ahead and send those answers to the individuals who, who did ask those questions directly. So all of the questions will be answered. Again, thank you all for joining. I'm gonna go ahead and now pass the floor over to Doug for our formal welcome. Go ahead, Doug. Thank you. So hi everyone, thanks for uh, taking the time out of your day to uh, attend this webinar. Um, I am the uh, Highland Supplier Business Manager for TE. Um, we're really excited to show you the Power VersaLock product. Um, when TE launched this just a few weeks back, uh, we knew this was a product that we wanted to get out to the engineering community of our customers. So uh, again, thanks for taking the time and we're excited to show you this product. Um, with that, I will hand it over to uh, Melissa Stanley, who's the product manager for Power VersaLock, and Kevin Brown, who is the sales manager for Appliance in North America. Thank you, Doug. Thanks, Doug. Um, so welcome, everyone. I, I can skip this part. I don't need to see me. Um, I just want to give you a nice um, overview of the Power VersaLock product line. It's a new product that we've been developing, and it will be launched here shortly. And we're excited about it. I'm going to show you what is already released and maybe give a little hint of some of the um, newer products still coming out. Um, as it comes out of development. Um, I'm gonna to go to the first product highlight slide, please. Um, okay, to start, this is a five millimeter center line spacing product line. That seems to be the optimum for power solutions. If you get lower than a, or smaller than a five millimeter center line, um, you won't meet the power requirements. Um, so the five millimeter is, is definitely a preferred uh, size. These, this product line has a flexible housing design allowing for the same housings to be used for unsealed and sealed applications. All of the housings are a ULV zero, which is the pretty much an industry requirement for the most part these days, not always in the distribution um, markets, but if customers are looking for safety factors, the V zero is definitely a, a key feature. This product will get you to a 15 amp current rating. And I'm gonna go with configurations and sizes a little bit later. Um, the wire size uh, we can accommodate on these are 14 gauge up to 26 gauge. There are different terminals for the sealed or unsealed. As I said, it is a very versatile line. It can be used either sealed or unsealed. With these seals, you get an IP67 uh, seal rating, and that means uh, that you get no dust and you get water, um, it's waterproof up to one meter. Um, I'm going to cover some of the um, some of the accessories and things in another slide, because we do have a lot of different configurations, as you can see, from a one by one, um, a lot of the single row up to um, a two by three, and you, you can see some different configurations, and we'll go through some of those here in a little bit. All of these come with keys and colors. The keys and colors are kind of a dual poke yoke that you've got, if it's a key A, it's one color. If it's a key B, it'll be another color. So if you do have someone who is colorblind and can't see the colors, 
the king should prevent mismating. There's also another feature on the uh, cap housing with the little clip that is used um, for when the, the, par the parts, the caps and plug housings are used both for panel mount and free hanging. The mounting clip feature is used when you're using it in a free hanging uh, situation. You can hook the clip onto, you know, onto a panel. You don't actually need a panel uh, cutout for panel mount. So it, it allows it to be um, held into place without a lot of extra work. Can we go to the next slide, please? So this picture is showing um, a little difference there with the unsealed that's used with the TPA and the sealed with a back cover. With this product, um, the TPA is used with the unsealed only. Um, we Unfortunately, you can't fit the TPA and the seals in on the same connector, but with the unsealed, the TPA, the TPA will um, serve as the terminal positioning. It will confirm that that terminal is in position and it should not back out. Um, then with the, with the seals, we offer a back cover since the TPA won't fit. So with that seal you get, and the back cover, you'll still get some additional terminal retention although it's not considered a TPA. Next slide, please. Okay. So the uh, Power Versa Lock is a uh, wire-to-wire -wire application. There is no wire-to-board offering for this one. It is a tab and receptacle design versus a pin and socket. And some of the benefits of that are you get a higher reliability, you get more points of contact with the tab and receptacle, and you're also able to offer a lower insertion force with the tab and receptacle. Um, I mentioned the uh, mounting clip a bit. Just an example of how that mounting clip is beneficial. Um, and for one example is um, being used in a washing machine where there's high vibration. If a customer is going to use that and not in a panel, you wouldn't have to put manual wire ties on it and hold it down. Without having to use the manual wire ties, you're going to eliminate a lot of the manual labor and reduce the tack time, and that would help the customer reduce cost. The optional uh, TPA or back cover shown below. I got a phone ringing in my ear. Right now we've got the TPAs for a two by three. You saw we had the different configurations. We do have TPAs coming out for all of the single row. So we'll, right now we have just the TPA for two by three, but the others are coming along. You will see those being released shortly. We do have the back covers for all of the single row and um, just like right now, the back cover for a one by three, um, when we tool up the three by three, we will just use like three of those covers or three of those TPAs and be used for a three by three. Um, the picture just shows a little bit how this whole solution fits together. So it does have, for the whole solution, you would have the interface seal you know, with the plug, you've got the gang seal at the rear, the terminals push through the seal, um, and then you put the back cover on. Or if you choose not to use the seals, you would just put a TPA on the back of the terminal. Let go to the next slide. This shows one of our uh, patented twist and lock. It was actually designed specifically for the refrigeration application but it's not limited to refrigeration applications. It can be used in any application that you've got one side of a panel is more of a dry side and the other side would have moisture. And what it does is the, the side that has the angled uh, twist and lock, it angles down so its gravity would actually pull the water and moisture away from the connections and you don't have to use a lot of the foam the foam in process. Again, saving customers 
with money, helps with rework that you could just unplug it and you don't have all of the foam and such in place. And it's a lot cleaner, a lot uh, cost reduction with the, the process. Uh, you can go ahead to the next the next slide, please. Okay, I did mention that you we've got the terminals both for the sealed um, and the unsealed. The sealed contacts are a bit different. They are designed differently so as they fit with a low insertion force through the seals. So they have a different lead-in on the terminal. Um, and this just gives a, a depiction of that lead-in uh, to be used with those seals. And in fact, we've also got some, uh, with the lower, smaller size gauge terminals right now, we have developed a small um, inside diameter seal as well to be used with the smaller gauge wires to ensure that we keep the IP67 seal rating. And it seemed really quick, but that was really the overview of, I think, all of the power versa lock. I'm sorry, I think we have one more slide. Go ahead. This, is a, this slide shows um, a lot of the different configurations. Um, so we've got the, like I said, a one by one, we've got one by two, one by three, and one by four. The one by two actually has many different keying options, and each of those keying options comes in a different color. Uh, the one by three, one by four has the keying options in A through C. We have the two by three, um, and the two by three has not just the inline cap, it also has the twist and lock cap. The two by three uh, right now is the only one with the twist and lock cap that does not come with the single row. But we are also developing now a three by three. And so if you'd have an uh, application that needs a nine position versus six, that would be really shortly. Um, again, with the inline and the twist and lock. Um, the one by four is actually in development right now. It should be out very shortly. But what you would find right now available are the one by one, one by two, one by threes, and two by threes. And all of these have different um, accessories with the back covers and all of the rear seals and the TPAs. The rear seals are um, size specific, so you need a rear seal for you know, you know, the one by one or the one by two. And again, when we get into the multi-row product, we would use multiple seals for the different rows. Um, and that's, I think that was all I have to show for the power burst lock. So with that, I'm going to hand this over to Kevin because we also have a new product with the signal double lock, um, and Kevin's going to give a quick review of that product. And thanks, Melissa. This is um, I'm Kevin Brown. I've got the uh, responsibility for appliance business unit uh, distribution sales uh, for the Americas, and the. 2.5 millimeter sealed signal double lock family, and Sharice, we can go to the next one, um, is really the, the low power version of what Melissa described for the power versa lock. So this is a smaller center line at two and a half millimeters, but it's still classified in the IP67 uh, grade waterproofing. So the combination of the power versa lock and sealed signal double lock give us a complete offering in the market for that ip67 rated rating which is an upgrade from what we offer today in the the universal mate lock families so as you can see it's it's a bit smaller goes up to just the three amp uh rating we do have free hanging and panel mount design options for these it's not available in the twist and lock it's more of the traditional panel mount design um, again, we've, we've incorporated the snag proof latches so they don't uh, grab a hold of each other in bundles as your customers are, are producing the, the wire harness bundles and sub-assemblies as you go um, to give it more reliability and, and less chance of rework or breaking. 
Um, we've also incorporated on, on both families the polarized terminals. Uh, so you can't put these in upside down and uh, prevent uh, misinsertion and potentially you know, terminal back out at, at the end of line when you're mating to, to the other uh, harness side connector. Um, the one difference, if we can go to the next slide, the one key difference I want to point out here is with the TPAs. Uh, as Melissa described on a power versa lock, uh, the TPAs are designed for the unsealed applications. Um, and those unsealed versions of power versa lock actually give you a higher current rating than the terminal family that it, it's based on, which was our power double lock. Um, the five millimeter spacing gives it a little more robust uh, terminal uh, performance in terms of the, the current ratings. With the low power version, we were able to incorporate that TPA on the, the interface side. And you can see kind of in the bottom two pictures, the, the black uh, TPA in the cap and plug. So in this product family, you can uh, have it both as a sealed and include the TPA. It's uh, primarily because the terminals are a bit smaller in the sealed size than they are, or the signal size instead of the power versa lock. The power versa lock gives you a bit more robust terminal with a plastic retention. Um, the, the, it, it, it's, I guess, more robust and beefier. Uh, when you get into the smaller terminal sizes, these extra TPAs give you, give you the added uh, retention that, that you may not get with just the terminals and the plastic, but they are optional and, and the parts will perform well without them. Um, and you can see the, the product family size that we have uh, today, two through six position, both in the free hanging and uh, panel mount versions. If we go to the next one. So here you'll see some of the target market applications and, and in both product families, there's a, a significant amount of overlap. Uh, you will see kind of our appliance spin on a lot of these. So you'll see quite a few references to those applications, but um, as with our universal mate and lock families, they are used across all industries, applications. And, and as you think about where you would design these into your applications, um, you wanna find you know, environments that are obviously gonna need sealed against the, the moisture, additional vibration uh, resistance, high temperature environments, any of those uh, kind of rugged, harsh type environment applications would be a good fit uh, for those products. And the next one. So just kind of summarizing and a bit of overlap between the two. Again, they're the IP67 rated product, um, which give you uh, more than the splash proof, dust proof level that we have in mate lock. It actually gives you a uh, a higher level of waterproofing solution and, and some level of immersion protection there as well. Uh, on the sealed signal double lock, you have the smaller center line spacing. On the power versa lock, uh, it's a bit wider spacing, beefier terminals and higher current ratings there. Um, easier assembly as we're seeing a lot of this manufacturing come back into the Americas. Um, we wanna have, you know, less rework, less labor uh, aligned with, with the product. So we're looking at um, more ergonomic solutions, uh, fewer Kate opportunities to mismate or misassemble any of those products. Um, and then for the more critical applications, uh, we have the, the TPAs as well going forward. Um, we have done some market analysis and we believe that both are a very economical, uh, you know, well-priced solutions compared to you know the cost and value proposition that we offer um and and we've got the wide range of different configurations and keyings you know for for any of the applications that you may need so in the the next slide we want to talk a little bit about the application tooling and uh want to give our thanks to the the team at highland they are the key partner in the Americas for us in, in what they call the tool loaner tool program. 
and where we have available hand tools in the market um, and uh, the, they're being developed for both of these product families. Uh, we will have hand tools available at Highland so they can loan those out to end customers, do some initial prototyping, try those out. Um, I, I hear in, in some cases, instead of returning them, many of the customers just buy those and Highland restocks them. But either way, um, it, it is a great way and, and really more important in terms of the performance uh, and validation of the product to make sure that you have the right tooling and product combinations. And our global application tooling group uh, is working closely with Highland to make that happen. Um, you can also get the uh, applicators for higher volume production. Um, those are available and uh, Highland is, is a supporting partner for that product line as well. Um, and I, I get uh, a couple nickels every time I mention the heat shrink equipment program that, that we have as well. So Highland's a big partner for us uh, doing value add and stocking our, our heat shrink tubing solution. So in the, the harness assemblies, they'll have that equipment available as well. Um, and then the, the next slide is, before we get into Q&A, is just uh, indication of our available resources. Um, you know, first of all, if you have a Highland contact that's invited you to the webinar and you're working with, um, they should already know who these people are. Um, if you do uh, need more technical support or want to reach out to us directly, um, you have uh, the coverage map of our uh, field sales engineers that um, are dedicated just to supporting partners that buy through uh, a distribution network. Uh, and, and we'll be happy to, to support you and answer any of the technical questions. If, if we don't get to your questions in Q&A, you may actually get an email from from one of us listed here to, to, to help uh, resolve your questions and get your answers there. That, with that, I'll turn it back over to Cerise. Okay, um, I just wanted to go through a few of the questions that have popped through, um, Kevin or Melissa. One of the first questions we received are, do these seal to the panel or just to the connectors? So I can, I can take that one. The, the majority of the product seals to the connectors themselves. So the connector assembly is sealed. Um, the twist and lock product does provide some level of sealing to the panel, but I, I don't know that I would call that an IP67 rating on the, on the twist and lock. So it's really just the, the connector bodies themselves that are, are sealed. Okay, uh, next question that we received was, is the TPA required for both sealed and unsealed versions? Okay, for, for both of these products, TPAs are optional. And for the Powerversal Lock, the TPA can only be used as an option with the unsealed, with the, with the uh, power, or with the signal double lock, the TPA, optional TPA, can be used sealed or unsealed. Okay, next question asked, are either rated for use in 48 volt type systems? Melissa, I'll have to defer to you on that one. I'm assuming they're they're talking about a 48 volt DC application. In that case, I'm I'm not 100% sure what our test plan was done for that. Yeah, I'd have to have we um, we should have engineering check on that one. Yeah, so, Sarisha, we can get the. I know our, yeah. I know our, our voltage rating is 600 volt, but I'm not sure about how how that works in that application. Yes, it's the DC rating. Is what yeah. they. So, if we up. can get that yeah. the contact information yep. for whoever's asking that one, we can follow up and get them the answer offline. Okay. All right, next question is, what is the temperature range of the Versalock? For the current parts right now, the 
temperature rating is at 105 C. With the new three by three coming out, we are are trying to get a little bit higher temperature rating at 120. Um, that one is still in development, so it's still attempting, but definitely, you know, we definitely hit the 105. We're trying to get higher temperature ratings with the same materials. And if we're successful there, we'll, we may go back and retest the product to get higher. Um, we do have some an option for future high temp terminals. Um, we have not developed those yet, but they are in the future plans. So if you would have a high temp application, you just have to let us know. Okay. Uh, next question coming in is, what is it about the TP option, TPA option that ensures correct terminal position? Yes, I, I can, have an image to show it. Yeah, do you want to take it, you Kevin? To, oh, sure. Yeah, I can take it. If you go up to slide six, maybe Cherise, I don't know if you can jump back, but yeah. um, what the the way the terminals insert into uh, the housings, um, the the metal terminals themselves will have a latch feature that interfaces inside the, the plastic housing. So there's a kind of a ramp and lever action there that ensures that that mates. The kind of wider part uh, of the insulation crimp, that overlap lap crimp sort of in the middle uh, where the black wires go in at the, the cross overlap there, um, that bottoms out in the terminal cavity. And then the brown TPA in this picture, the those uh, kind of extended pieces there um, will push in to make sure that the terminals are bottomed out inside the plastic housing and then the side latches hold that in position so if your terminal is not fully inserted then the tpa won't uh latch properly onto the the side latches so you can't snap that on unless the terminals are properly inserted and if they happen to be put in upside down there's not enough travel for those terminals um because of the uh, uh, um, airproofing feature inside they won't fully insert so if the terminal is upside down and it's only partially in when the TPA goes to uh, attach to the housing it won't fully bottom out and that'll give you the indication that they weren't properly positioned okay uh, next question is can the standard TE crimp tooling be used with these terminals or will the cable supplier need custom tooling So the applicators we do have, and crimp tooling, oh, go ahead. Well, I said we do have release tooling specifically for all of these terminals that we do recommend to use the TE tooling. Um, we, we have actual hand tools and applicators for these parts. So I'm not sure what the other standard tooling might be referred to. Yeah, so it, it will be, different tooling than you know a power double lock or a signal double lock product um, but the the ocean applicators that hopefully you're familiar with and and the GATD hand tool products those platforms will be common there's different die sets and, and unique part numbers for these and it's mainly to ensure that when you do the overlap insulation crimp that all those edges are smooth and you're not snagging the the seals when you insert them into the the gang seal okay another question that came through is what is the lower limit is it marketed for industrial applications i guess i'm not clear on what lower limit was implying not, lower limit meaning temperature yeah, I'm not exactly sure what oh i think the the lower temp rating is is minus 30 right melissa i'd have to verify i think that is it yeah i think i think they were both rated from minus 30 to 105 okay um we I have had yeah we have had a couple requests um to go to uh, minus 40. And, and if you needed that, 
you know, reach out to us and, and we can investigate, you know, the, the exact environment you have and, and do some additional testing if that's required. Okay, uh, another question just came through. Do you have a current derating curve? So this this should be in the the product spec when it's fully released. And they um, they would typically show the the ratings when you're talking about temperature, current ratings, and and how many uh, terminals, whether you have a one, two, or three position. So that is typically contained in our what we would call the, the 108 spec or the product spec. So okay. I'm, I'm not 100% sure that it's loaded onto our website yet, uh, but it will be available. Okay, and another question that just popped through is, what differentiates TE ceiling connectors from competitor ceiling connectors? Um, well, I think we're trying to highlight some of the, the features that we did with our housings, um, just that you can use the same housing, uh, sealed and unsealed. Um, I think the, the latch clip is on the housing is definitely a uh, something that TE is doing that we haven't seen elsewhere that you're using that same housing for the panel mount and the free hanging um, but with the clip um, I and I think a few of these yeah I think you know the, in, in a lot of the markets that we're competing in the the IP67 rating is that is an improvement over you know it's definitely improvement over what we had to offer and it's it's an improvement over many of our competitors as well okay and if the final question just popped through is if i'm interested in, in designing or knowing more about these products should i connect with te or highland So if, if you've got uh, a Highland contact, um, feel free to reach out to them. The, the last page there is uh, that we showed with the map and I believe all the participants will get a copy of that uh, electronically. So we're here to help. Um, if you contact Highland, they can pull in the TE person. If you, if you reach out to the TE person, we're likely gonna pull the, the Highland person in along with us to support you. So. Um, whatever is easier for you, um, but if if you've had a Highland person invite you into the webinar, I'd, I'd recommend starting with them, and then they'll they'll pull the right TE people in to to help as well. Great. Uh, it looks like we have one more question that popped through. Comparing to Universal Maintenance, what what is the cost advantage? We're trying to keep the cost rather similar. You may see a little bit higher price for the uh, universe or for the Versa lock versus the universal maintenance lock, but you know, we're, you're getting a little bit more advantage with it. You know, some of the lower insertion force, uh, the IP ratings, um, so some of those are with the different materials and things that is a little bit higher. Um, but we are trying to keep it very competitive with universal mate and lock because we do see a lot of customers moving from the universal mate and lock to the versal lock to get the higher ceiling, um, but a lot of it also to get the lower insertion forces available. Yeah, and there's, from our market analysis, there's, if you're comparing IP67 rated to other, to our offerings here um, to get that added capability, it, it, there, there should be a cost advantage in the market so it, it may be a slight premium to to get the blade and receptacle and 67 rating but um, when you compare ip67 to others uh, i think you'll be pleased with the pricing we have okay one other question uh is this only wire to wire is this only for wire to wire applications or is there a panel mount version available Today, both. 
you can go ahead with, we've got the, we call it an inline and then the um, twist and lock, but they are used for the, for both the, the wire wire and for the panel mount, it is the same housing with the versal lock, the, you can either use the latches on the side for the panel mount or they would just not be used. Um, but if it is not in the panel, we do have the clip that would be able to hold it in place. Yeah, but, so it's the uh, same part. Uh, so as of right now, we we don't have a true uh, circuit board header version available. Um, right. Okay. Uh, one other question just popped through is where are the products manufactured? Uh, right now, these are all manufactured in Asia. There is future plans to possibly move those molds um, as needed into the U.S., but they will start out with in Asia. Okay, it looks like that was our last question. Oh, we just had one more pop through. I'm sorry. Um, with regards to manufacturing, is it manufactured in China? Yes. Okay. Okay. Looks like there's no more questions popping through right now. Um, unless Kevin or Melissa had anything else that they wanted to add or Doug, um, I can go ahead and close the call. I just wanted to thank everyone again for joining us today on the call. Um, again, any questions that were not specifically answered during the conversation, we will go ahead and send individual emails to those people. Um, and on this map, you can see all of the TE salespeople that you can contact if you have any additional questions, or you can also contact your Highland salesperson. Um, and again, I just wanted to thank you all for your time. We are going to be recording this and it, we will send out the recording to everyone after uh, the webinar. Thank you all again for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.